Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. From ground zero to complete success, automating a process in six simple steps. Yeah, let's get to it. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, today's podcast, like we said a minute ago, we're going to come over, go over from starting from ground zero to complete success, automating a process in six simple steps. Uh, this is also, it's purposely non-techy, I guess is the best way to summarize it. Was that what you'd say, Jackie? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good way of saying it. Yeah. So especially people that are very, very new to, to automation or just to deciding you want to automate, uh, this this is going to be a really good good one for you. So um, starting off, uh, I'll go jump in here. Identifying repetitive tasks by looking carefully at what you do frequently or what you have a lot of people doing. Uh, this is what it's a no-brainer. It's, it's it's one of those things I realize, and, and, and I still think it'd be a good separate topic, but batching, you know, when you start batching things together, you see those patterns of what you do over and over and over, and it, and it helps you really spot the things that are really, hey, you know what, this is worth me writing a program for, or finding a way to create a template or some way to speed it up. Yeah, you might even be able to identify it almost before you start the task. You, you would maybe know that this is something I'll be doing in, in a week or in a month, or I'll be doing this a few times uh, a month or a few times a year or whatever. Uh, it's a good way of simply just identifying these repetitive tasks because everybody has them. So it's it's just a matter of actually saying, hey, this one, I know that if I put in a little effort here, I'll be able to save time. Uh, no, that's spot on, Jackie. It's a really good point of it's such a critical factor in deciding what you're actually going to and how much time you're going to spend on doing something, right? Because those where you do them very, very frequently, um, or or you have a lot of people doing them, both of those are great prospects to save a lot of time. Yeah, and, and sure enough, if if you're one of those that automate a lot of stuff, you might get biased and think that everything is worth automating. But yeah, again, actually identifying repetitive tasks that are worth automating, that, that is a part of it. That's absolutely sure. I'll say, I'll cover the next one uh, already and say, um, if in plain text you can write out the steps that you take to complete the task, this can really help you actually writing it out in, in pseudo code or however you want to do it. Um, at, at my job, we, we do this quite a lot because we need to document what we do if someone is sick or someone else is supposed to take over the task or whatever it might be. And just the process of actually doing that helps immensely when you then want to actually automate it. Just someone else writing out how they perform the task, it, it's, it's, it's gold, it really is. Yeah, that, that, I, actually, I, that's exactly what I was going to say was, yeah, it, it can help you so much in understanding what you know, you should be, when you go to automate it or you hire someone out, it makes it so much easier for them to um, figure out what needs to get done. Now, which we've had this conversation before, sometimes if you're, if you're the professional person doing automation, you, you know, you're not doing it, you might want to talk to them and ask the questions of like, are you sure this is the best source for this kind of stuff, right? Because we've, we've talked how sometimes with a little discussion, you can find a much better source, right? But um, generally speaking, that's not the case. Yeah. So the, the next one is uh, establish if um, it's a really critical one, but for those of us who, who do this kind of stuff, is it just going to be me running the code or am I going to be giving this either to someone or maybe running it on multiple computers? Because that changes drastically the approach you're going to use for the type of code you're going to write. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just had uh, today, I wrote out something that was interacting with um, Excel. And I needed to take a piece of a string and use it in the row just above it, uh, but not everything. And with four lines of code, I had it copy to the clipboard and uh, remove some of the string and paste it back in. Really, really simple. But as soon as I'd written it, I was like, 
I should have actually used an Excel com object for this small task. So I immediately wrote that after doing it a few times. And sure enough, I was very happy. It was last much, much faster, much, much more reliable. So within uh, the next 15 minutes or so, I added in a loop and it was doing 100 rows at a time. And it's so, so yeah, absolutely. If you start out by writing it out in, in a good way and deciding, is it just for you? Is it for someone else? And it, this one was just for me. So I started very simply. Right. And it, it, it really does make sense. And I know nobody will be using it because this is one of mine. It's only for me, but that means I can iterate over it each time I need it and, and add a bit to it. Um, but yeah, yeah, having a few hotkeys there that take care of a few of the steps. Yeah, so. yeah that was, um, it actually came up over the weekend. I was helping uh, Dylan. He's a, he's a, he's one of our listeners and uh, he, ha he has this, he's a, actually, I, I can't even remember what he is, but he, he's a, he, he creates music. Um, and his software was really interesting and, and, it, and it, it didn't have standard controls it's not to do stuff with and even though he had automated it somewhat he was he has very complex stuff that he gives to people and it he knew that he didn't want to give them that because it was not going to be robust right and it was going to break and he he didn't didn't give we didn't have this deep of a conversation but i got the impression from him he wasn't sharing it because he knew it was going to break right and just knew it just wasn't going to be reliable and then uh, I said, did you did you try the ACC library? And uh, we ended up, he didn't know what it was. We started playing with it and solved it with that, act programmatically doing stuff. Um, and now he has a robust tool that he can start working on and, and to be able to share. It was like, it was really cool to, to see that he understood too, like, hey, sending mouse clicks, this and that, it, it's okay for me on my computer because if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. I can kind of fix it. But yeah, sharing that out with people, it just leads to really big headaches usually. Yeah, exactly. And, and our fourth point here is decide how much of the process you want to automate. Right? It, it might rarely be 100% uh, of the process. Sure enough, you, you can have stuff where that's the goal immediately. But at least to me, with, with taking care of tasks that are mine, I'll make sure that the most tedious parts are automated first. Uh, and it must also be the most trivial parts that are automated first because I can do it in so little code and because it's me writing the code, me reading the code and me pressing the hotkeys, it can be um, a scrambled mess. Um, uh, the, the, the keys or the ways to activate stuff might not make that much sense, but because I'm reading the code, I can always go back and reread it the next time I need it. But I've also been on the other end where someone has says, can, can we automate this? And I, I knew right off the bat that it wouldn't make sense to try and automate it in, in steps because the person would forget <laughs> which way to do it. Uh, we had a, a one point where it would first get it off the internet and then when they had opened it, they would need to press a new key that would then change the formatting and remove redundant information. And then they would need to, to press another key to, and we had to write out documentation for that four step process, just because they kept forget. It was like uh, F, uh, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. Fairly simple. Uh, ways of activating it, but still it, it didn't work out. And we we're like, should we make a GUI for it so that it becomes simpler or, and the person just wrote out a guide for themselves, which of course worked, but in the long haul, just having that button they clicked once and then they had the final product worked a lot better for them. Sure. With this one. Yeah, the other one though is, is it might be, I, I definitely want to automate this entire process. However, I have deadlines and have to get stuff done. So I don't have all the time in the world. So I, I'm going to automate, like you said at the beginning here, some of the most painful parts, 
Um, and then next, you know, later on, I'll come back and maybe do some more and some more, right? So um, exactly, it, yeah. yeah. We we have seen that we, we have seen the graph a few times where where if you're coding on something and you have a deadline, you'll be using too much time on trying to automate the thing, and then you might miss the deadline. So sure enough, automating a few things, saving yourself just enough to make the deadline. And then the next time you get the same task, you will already have saved so That's much right. time so that they expect that as soon as you make the deadline, you have time to actually reiterate your code and make the process even more automated. And at some point it will be, oh, that task, yeah, yeah, I can fix that for you. And mm, I'll have it done for you on Tuesday, right, next week. Right, you know, it takes a bit of time, and before you know it, it it's it's done before lunch, right? And right. then you can take on other jobs and right. progress. So yeah, but yeah, that's it's a great point. Of, and that we've talked about another one that's outside the scope of this, but over time you build a library of stuff, and it just becomes it builds and builds and makes it easier and easier to to automate things. And so it's it's a great thing to say. You know, maybe I'm not going to do this thing too much, but I know I'm going to have the same approach. And so I'm going to spend a little more time to automate it. Uh, but yeah, what I love to do is to, you know, I get the first one going and then I come back later. And the thing is your brain, it's a great reboot kind of for your brain too, because you see things you didn't see before and realize, oh, you know what? Why am I doing this part of it, man? Like I, you know, I can actually expand what I'm doing and not just this little thing I initially had thought of, but I can, I can get an even bigger picture and do the whole thing. Um, now, of yeah, course, I, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'd say what we're explaining there is kind of our point five, right? Actually writing the code to do the steps that you decided to automate. Right. So so absolutely doing that where you actually, I'd say do it in steps, right? You, you write out, like I, I used the example earlier where it would just take the value in one cell and very simply send an up arrow or whatever it was, I don't even remember anymore, and paste the, the remainder into to the other cell. It's a very simple step, but it's a step in the process. And I might have needed to do it hundreds and hundreds of times, but because I didn't actually need to click the cell and move my mouse and click the other cell and paste it in and delete a few characters, and then move on to the next one. And now I just had that one button to press. I pressed the button and then I would move the selection to the next place I needed to do it. I'd already saved myself half of uh, the time I would have used on doing everything manually. So yeah, this one writing code to do the steps that you have decided to automate. It, it really does make sense. Take a step at a time and write that out and see how much it helps. And when you've seen it work a few times and what you've done is pretty reliable, then you can extend on it. And before you know it, you'll have something that saves you an amazing amount of time. Yeah, and then the, so the last step, step six, just gets back to what you're saying is start using it and later decide if you need to refactor it or, or expand on it, you know, um, maybe actually kind of like you did where you, you started off because let's say, let's pretend you were in a really big hurry and that's why initially you didn't use calm and you just solved it. Well, maybe later you're like, you know, wow, I didn't realize how helpful this is going to be or how many times it's going to come back to it. Uh, you know what? Calm in the long run, even if the other one was pretty reliable, calm because switching, if it switches to another person, another computer, generally speaking, calm is like, that's great for that. Right. So. Um, it's it's a great way to be able to do stuff. So maybe that's when you change it over um, and and build it where it's uh, very very reliable um, and even faster. But it doesn't sound like that was an issue. But yeah, being able to, yeah. to go back over time. I'd, I'd say I had a, a script that had maybe let's say a hundred lines and it had six hotkeys or something and and all of the hotkeys had small routines under them with. 10 to 15 lines each. And the one at the top was this very, very simple uh, copy, move the selection, paste it. And the next one was copy, remove parts of the string and paste in. And the next one had an object in there that would actually determine the length of this 
grow the string and if it had a specific length only remove another specific part of it and then paste that in and after doing maybe those three or four routines i was like now it becomes so complex because i wanted to move columns and decide stuff from over here to use that in what it's doing over there and then it became a complex enough task that it was just simpler to use calm and right. then the next two routines included calm and this was something i wrote maybe a month ago and today i had a need for it again and this time I was looking at the stuff where it was just copying it to the clipboard and doing a few things and then taking it back. I was like, now I've actually written two routines that use Calm completely and they work flawlessly. I'll yeah. just copy that to the beginning and rewrite it a, a, a slight bit. And then the entire script before I was done with the task was fully doing the stuff in Calm and it was doing a hundred rows at a time instead of one. And Next time I get the task, maybe next month or next month again, I'll probably end up being fully automated just because I've actually determined all of the different steps and all of the different scenarios and I have code pieces for it. So using the code and then often fine tuning it by adding a bit more each time I use it, it, it just works great. And just to clarify, um, this is one of the things when you look at uh, compared to using like something like UiPath or Automation Anywhere, we typically with AutoHotKey do stuff that involves a user to trigger the action, right? So even though, like Jackie said, the whole process is automated, but it doesn't just run on its own, right? Like it still takes a person to say, hey, go do that, right? I'm in the right place or whatever. And it doesn't have to, but that is that is what we typically design, right? Is, is things that require it need that um, yeah exactly i'm not saying that the step couldn't be automated uh, further and right. saying hey as soon as uh, you get an email with this wording trigger this thing uh, download that stuff and run this fully automated process sure enough that could be added in but again that would be maybe three times up because hey I always know who it's going to be coming from and what he's asking or she's asking or whatever it might be. So when those things become covered, established or whatever, yeah. then you could uh, automate them instead but, of trying to find it all out uh, immediately. Yeah. yeah and, and we haven't noted for a different podcast, but um, Computers are great at automating things, doing repetitive tasks, this, that. The, using the logic deciding to know exactly when to do something, like it, that it can be a much, much more complex thing. And yes, we can program for it. However, there's, you know, there's so many exceptions to like what we come up with that that's where, you know what, just having a human make that decision, it's so fast and easy um, that, that just sometimes that makes the most sense, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you've already saved so much of your time. Right. So actually having that small part of, of the process can make a lot of sense. I, I know, Joe, you've, you've even had managers who said, eh, don't automate it, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah that, that's, that, that depends on who you are and what you think that entitles. Because a lot of people might think that automating a process will introduce errors. Right, and it, it truly depends on how you do it. If you try to route out, uh, write out this amazingly complex big thing in a one go, and and you test it for uh, fifteen minutes, and then say it's all ready, go right. for it, yeah. um, then then yeah, that's that's probably not uh, the best thing to do. But if you do it in steps and you follow along and you keep track of the quality of it, right. when you do those small incentments, at the end, you will probably have something that is truly robust. Right, highly reliable, does what you want, does the majority of the work, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Awesome, man, well, great, great, uh, great call today, podcast. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Uh, don't forget everyone, like, subscribe, tell us, tell us some thoughts on this, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, let us hear. Absolutely. I want to hear everything you have to say. Have a great day. Bye. Yeah, bye.
We love reading your comments, that's for sure. So let us hear what you think. We love those likes and please do share. If you enjoyed that episode of the Automators Podcast, you might also like this one. Hey, seven ways to increase the likelihood of you getting help with your code. That's what we'll be covering today. Absolutely, man. Awesome. If you like that, make sure you go to pod.theautomator.com and look for it.